thanks for staying watching. I'm going to go into a bit more detail now on the relationship between these two curves, the average first homeowner mortgage and the percentage of first homeowners in the market. Just to recap, I've taken this data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics website, graphed the data on the same scale in Excel and overlaid the graphs in my graphics software. I want to explain further why I feel investors have been the main cause of pushing the average first home buyer mortgage to unaffordable levels. So in addition to the first two graphs, I've also added two more graphs from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. The first one here is Australia's House Price Index, the relative value of houses in Australia from 1987 to 2010. And down the bottom here is the interest rates changes over that time. Just to confirm, it's all to scale. We've got December 1996. Down the bottom here, this is all in December 1996, 97, 98. And up the top here, we've got the increments from March 96 to March 97, December in there somewhere. And just to show it's all still to scale, we've got December 2006 here. And um, once again, up the top, March 2006, December in there somewhere. And this lines up with December 2006 down the bottom. So these graphs are all to scale. Although the data for first home buyers only starts here in 1991, between the years 1983 and 1989, Bob Hawke offered first home buyers a grant of $4,000. The main activity on the property market here, though, was after the stock market crash in 1987. On October 19, 1987, Black Monday, the Australian Stock Exchange fell by 41%. You can see this on the graph of interest rates where they drop off quite dramatically. After the crash, investors wanted out of the stock market. So in 1987, the Hawke government gave incentive by reintroducing negative gearing. And there was an exodus of investors into the property market. You can see the effect this had when rates begin to rise again. The bidding war between first home buyers and investors finished when the $4,000 first home owners grant ended in 1989. Prices soon began to cool off and following this, interest rates, which in 1990 led to their downward spiral into the recession we had to have. Gradually, as interest rates fell, more first home buyers found themselves able to re-enter the market, as the data shows here starting in 1991. Over the decade between 1990 and 2000, the average first home buyer's mortgage steadily rose. The way I interpret the cause of this straight line is due to negative gearing. If you're not familiar with negative gearing, it's a policy that allows investors to take the difference between the cost of a mortgage on a property and what it rents out for each week and offsets this against their taxable income. So here's me and my girlfriend on the right. Here's a one or two bedroom unit in Sydney and here's an investor on the left. The mortgage on the property costs them about $500 a week but they rent it to us for $300 a week. That $200 loss is able to be offset against the tax paid by the investor, hence the property is negatively geared. The government needs to give incentive for investors to own rental properties so that there is rental accommodation available in the property market. If negative gearing was pulled, rents would be raised because less investors would have the incentive to own an investment property. Of course, the risk for the investor is if they can't rent it out, the property sits empty and they lose the full $500 a week. So investors look to minimise the loss, a mortgage with lower weekly repayments, but still one that rents out well, a property that rents at a weekly rate affordable to the majority of the market, median wage earners. So you can see how negative gearing put investors in direct competition with first home buyers, pushing up the more affordable entry level property on the market generally small units and houses in the outer suburbs.
And you can see the effect of this competition here with the blue line between 1990 and 2000. The average first home buyer's mortgage was being driven up. And during this time, the red line shows you that the activity of first home buyers was relatively constant between that uh, 20 and 25 percent bracket. Investors had negative gearing versus the homeowners who knew it was better to buy rather than rent in the long run as you'd eventually own the property and you could start climbing the property ladder for yourself. Hence the mantra of the baby boomers, in the long run it was better to buy rather than rent.